Euh, merci. Alors, euh, je vais donner ce discours en anglais et en français en même temps parce qu'il y a des gens qui uh, do not understand French, so I will say some of the stuff in English. Alors, euh, si c'est marqué en français, je vais le lire en anglais pour traduire. Alors, euh, le but de, de la conversation is user experience versus developer experience. Uh, my name is Estelle. Je suis à estelle.github.io. Uh, Je suis la seule uh, personne qui a pu avoir Estelle. Mais now there are three Estelles on GitHub. Um, and I know this because I get their emails. OK. So, en 2008, dans la ville où j'habite, Tesla a créé le Roadster. In 2008, the Roadster was created in San Carlos, California. En quatre ans, ils en ont vendu 2,450. They sold 2,450 in the first four years for $30 million. L'année dernière, ils en ont vendu plus de 27 000, non, 264 000. Um, they sold $8.5 billion worth of cars because the price point went down from $125,000 to $30,000. La raison que je vous dis ça, c'est parce que la richesse du monde, c'est pas le 1% qui vont acheter tes trucs, c'est si tu veux que tout le monde achète le truc. If you sell things for less money, you'll sell more of them. So if you want to reach the 1%, you can target the 1% with your websites. But if you want to sell 264,000 cars, you want to reach the other rows as well. Si tu, tu, tu crées quelque chose qui est tellement cher, seulement les super riches peuvent l'acheter. Mais si tu crées quelque chose qui est un peu moins cher, tu peux en vendre beaucoup plus parce que beaucoup plus de personnes peuvent euh, avoir. Alors l'idée, c'est qui sont tes utilisatrices? And for those in English, utilisatrice is the English way of saying users, because you might notice that there are no women in this site. So you are not your user. Most people develop for themselves. T'es pas la seule personne qui va se servir de ta outil. Il y a plein de si tu penses qu'à toi, tu vas manquer plein de personnes. So who are your users? Are they have the latest Mac with a double screen? Or do they have a shitty phone that costs $15? Est-ce qu'ils sont milliardaires qui travaillent pour Google? Ou est-ce qu'ils sont quelqu'un euh, qui habite en, à Budapest qui gagne beaucoup moins d'argent que les, euh, les mecs, parce que c'est presque que des mecs, qui travaillent à Google? Alors, I'm going to speak about user experience versus developer experience. Alors, it's in English, alors je vais le traduire en français. Alors, euh, ce site, Costores, a vraiment raté le coup. Euh, non seulement ils se sont servis de Icon Font, qui n'a pas pu réussir, mais ils ont en erreur de JavaScript, qui a résulté, euh, qui a, le résultat, c'est ça. This is the live site that, they were, that Lady Ada King was complaining about. Tu peux pas acheter de jupe. You can't buy any skirts here. Une erreur, une erreur de JavaScript a fait ça. One error did this. Alors le web. The web is made up of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, other markup languages, and binary files. L'expérience de développeuse, as a developer, what are we using? We're using frameworks, libraries, post-processors, pre-processors, build tools, um, and third-party scripts. Oh, and APIs and widgets, qui est donc, je ne sais pas comment on dit widget en français. Moi, j'appelle ça du coding. I call this coding. 
when you're using a framework and a library and you don't know the markup that you're putting together, it's called coding. Et ça crée de la merde comme ça. Um, it makes basically crap. Um, this is a button. C'est un bouton. C'est très simple à faire du HTML et marquer bouton. Div soup has no nutritional value. Je ne vais même pas le traduire. Quand, when you use only tools and you think of using frameworks, you end up with this. This is uh, the home page of visa. Uh, checkout, secure.checkout.visa.com. It's a form where you put your name and your, or your email address and your password and a checkmark that says remember me. C'est en forme avec trois trucs que tu peux remplir. Uh, ils envoient en demi megabyte, they send a half a megabyte down the pipes, but when it is uncompressed, it is 2.264. This copy is from two or three years ago, or three years ago when I worked there. J'ai travaillé là-bas pendant cinq mois. J'ai donné ma démission parce qu'on avait de la merde comme ça et personne m'écoutait. Et j'ai recréé leur site en deux semaines en, en travaillant en mi-temps. I worked there for five months. I quit, gave notice, and rewrote the entire site in two weeks in under 1,000 lines of vanilla JS. I mean vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The most performant JavaScript is the one you don't need to include. And then I came across this, which someone used CSS pre and post processor and came out with, this is actually le styles.css. 5.785 megs. Control your tools, don't let them control you. So the web. It's HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It's tools, yes, you can use them. It's communication, and it's empathy. So front end, it's user, it is user experience, it's performance, it's internationalization, it's accessibility, security, and privacy. That's what I call front end engineering. Engineering. Um, to plan ahead of time and to understand, to go in a direction and indicate the path that you need to take. Synonyms include to guide, to direct, to pilot. To guide, what does to guide mean? It means knowing the path and the difficulties you're going to come across. Diriger or to direct means to show the path and to keep your participants under control. To pilot is to basically guide on, the, on a dangerous path, that, or a path that might be dangerous or complicated. Je fais la bonne traduction. So, front-end engineering is what I said already, user experience, performance, internationalization, accessibility, security, and uh, privacy. So let's talk about that. Oh, front-end engineering is basically user experience. D'être ingénieur de front-end, c'est de penser tout le temps à l'expérience de tes utilisateurs. Okay, so performance. If your site does not work well, there can be serious consequences, even financial ones, and also safety ones, and I'll talk about that. Les sites qui sont... Uh, ça peut coûter très cher, it can cost a lot of money if someone doesn't have, if someone is on a meter, it's, you know, like, if I open a site here in France, my phone has been off for the week. If I open a site here, I have to pay $100 to my phone company for having international plan, and then a dollar for each megabyte. So the 24 gigabyte site is going to cost me a few thousand dollars. Um, the reason that Nigeria is actually slow to adopt mobile is because bandwidth is, bandwidth is so expensive that people um, can't pay for it. 
So if no one is using your site, does it mean or your web, uh, your mobile site? Does that mean that you don't need to have a mobile website, or does it maybe mean that your mobile website is shit? Alors, um, parce que ça c'est en anglais, je vais le dire en français. Um, ça dit il y a trois ans, mais c'était vraiment en 2009. Quelqu'un à Google, dans son 20% de temps, il a fait un truc qui s'appelle uh, uh, YouTube Feathers. Alors, il a pris le YouTube, qui était très, très énorme, et sans compter le vidéo principal. So they went to YouTube, and they basically, uh, not including the main video, ils ont décidé qu'ils voulaient avoir uh, pas plus de 100 kilobytes they reduced all of the Chrome around the video and the videos on the side down to 14 requests and 100 kilobytes from 58 requests and 1.2 megs. Alors, this was in 2009. Ça, c'était en 2009. Et après trois semaines, ils ont regardé uh, ce qui s'est passé. After three weeks, they looked at what happened, and they realized that the average time to download a website was taking long... Um, had increased by over a minute. Une fois qu'ils ont fait ça, ils ont découvert que ça prenait beaucoup plus de temps pour voir le site. Alors ils sont demandé qu'est-ce qui s'est passé. Et ils ont découvert que les personnes en Sibérie et je sais pas en Afrique centrale, j'ai aucune idée où parce que je me rappelle plus exactement où je l'ai lu. Euh, je l'ai lu ça mais c'est plus bas. Um, ils ont découvert que les gens qui pouvaient pas se servir de l'internet parce que c'était trop lent pouvaient finalement voir les vidéos de chat. Um, they discovered that people who had not been using YouTube because it took too long to download everything, not including their video, could finally watch their favorite um, cat videos. Alors, the moral of the story is, if you keep your code um, small and light, you can actually open up your site to new products um, and to new, uh, to new groups of people. Good performance is a plus. Bad performance is a handicap. Um, I'm going to skip this because everyone else has talked about it, and I need to make it shorter because I'm translating. So if we'll, um, you have to take and balance user experience and developer experience. You want to be able to use your tools, but you always need to put um, in this case, this is bad because developer experience is, has more weight and you really want it to be in the other direction. This is what I call DDR. C'est ce que j'appelle DDR, ou en anglais RDD, Resume Driven Development. When you put 43, the Visa site had 43 dependencies. Ils avaient um, React, jQuery, Backbone, um, uh, whatever that CSS thing that everyone uses from Twitter, I forget what it's called. Bootstrap, thank you. Um, it was a form. It was a form with three elements in it. Why do you need Bootstrap? That's resume-driven development. You're like, oh, I like React. I heard about React. Let's put in Angular because I need to try in Angular. Um, Vue. You need Vue. Actually, you should do the whole thing in Vue and get rid of the two others, but that's a different story. Okay. So that was Visa. Uh, je viens de décrire Visa, qui donc parce qu'ils ont mis tellement de trucs, il y avait 2000, uh, plus de 2 megs, et maintenant ils sont à 2,7. Et c'est quand même, ils n'ont pas changé la page. C'est exactement la même page. Okay. Et le problème avec ça, the problem with it is, you see that pink line right there? Because they had two megs of JavaScript, the site once it loaded. This is on a fast computer. Was um, had a two two and a half second DOM content loaded. Pendant deux secondes et demi, tu pouvais pas toucher le site pour mettre ton ton email address et ton password. For two and a half seconds, you couldn't even touch use a site to put in your the three. You couldn't fill out the form for a few seconds after the page loaded. Okay, et aussi il la battery. Battery, if like right now I'm not on battery, but every single one of you on cell phones, none of you have it plugged in right now, right? So if you're downloading and executing 2.5 megs every time you go to a page, you're using a battery. Not that much with 2.5, but your sites might um, ha be more than 2.5. Uh, battery life's getting better, but if you look here, sometimes it gets worse. 
Okay. So this site has 5.785 CSS. Why? Je n'ai jamais vu ça dans ma vie que CSS prend tellement longtemps. I've never seen CSS kind of break it. Well, I've seen CSS break the front end because of uh, what happens in the browser, but not on load. The uh, green line is the CSS. And if you remember from this morning, I said nothing renders when your CSS is downloading. Um, so we have a, a 10 second delay because of that. And they, um, you have to control your tools. So this is a post processor. You may have filter Microsoft. There's a Microsoft filter inside a WebKit Creeframe. frame. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> then this one's beautiful. 821 selectors for one declaration. And um, just so you see that it's actually 821. Move it left two pixels. Um, control your tools, don't let them control you. Um, understand your dependencies and why you're adding a tool to your site. Um, I think you understand, I was going to give an example. I'll give an example, but because I do it in English and French, I'm going to that too. Alors, there's a benefit and a cost to everything, and make sure that the benefit outweighs the cost. Il y a des bénéfices et des coûts. Ça coûte cher, mais il y a des bénéfices. Et si le bénéfice en outil vaut vraiment la peine, serre-toi de, de, de l'outil. Mais si ça coûte cher à ton utilisateur, ne t'en sers pas. And do a performance budget. Okay, so internationalization. Uh, think about internationalization when you're developing your website. Different cultures will be using your devices differently. Japanese, it'll be from top to bottom. Hebrew will be, and Arabic will be from left to right. So do proper encoding. Translate it. Make sure that it's culturally appropriate Localize it. Don't forget to put the language in. Ensure that your site can go into both directions, and I'll cover this in a second. And use CSS Flexbox and Grid and other uh, CSS features that allow you to change the direction. Tu peux se servir du Flex et du Grid pour aller dans l'autre direction. If you plan ahead, it's going to be really easy. If you have to go back and fix it, it's going to be really hard. So here's an example of bidirectionality. On top is, uh, is English. On the bottom is Hebrew. Can anyone read this? No, I'm the only one? OK. I don't speak Arabic, but I actually speak Hebrew when drunk. Um, so all we had to do was change the language of the page, and Flexbox changed the direction for us. So think ahead, planifier. Tout ce que j'avais besoin de faire, c'est changer la langue, et ça changer la direction. Parce que le, euh, le navigateur sait que l'hébreu va dans l'autre direction. Accessibil accessibility. When we think about accessibility, we think about people who are seriously disabled. Quand on pense à l'accessibilité, on pense à les, les trois prochaines personnes. Hein? This is who we're thinking about. We're all disabled. Granny glasses. On a tous des problèmes d'accessibilité. En ce moment, je, je porte des lunettes pour lire les petites choses et je me suis déchiré l'intérieur du genou. Ça, c'est temporaire. Ça et là, c'est permanent. Um, so think about different scenarios. It's really important to have different people on your team and to not think about how you're impacted. I mean, you should think about how you're impacted, but think about 
where average cases. Think about the outside case. Think about this case. Um, HTML is by default accessible. Our job as developers is to not fuck that up. So, use semantic HTML, use links for links, declare your language, don't break accessibility with CSS or frameworks, think about accessibility with every single decision. If you think about it when you're implementing it, you won't have to think about it later and fix it later. If you think about it now, it takes no extra effort to realize, oh, I need to put the alt attribute in. Or, oh, this label isn't matched with that form, let me do that now. If you go back in and have to fix things, it takes a long time. And then unplug your mouse and turn off your sound, is your website still usable? And hire a front-end engineer to create the architect, to do your um, front-end architecture. If you just hire someone who's a back-end engineer, they'll use tools because it's fast, but then you have that technical debt. And don't destroy your semantics with CSS. Si tu te sers de dis table display grid, c'est un grid et c'est plus une table pour, pour uh, le screen reader. If you do a display grid, it's no longer going to be accessible because it's no longer a table according to the accessibility object model. It is now a grid. So you can do things like this, right? It's really easy to do with display grid, but you can also do it with position sticky. So if you understand, like know your languages, you, if you know CSS, you know position sticky, and you can do this. Um, voila, this is the code to find it. Um, uh, it's actual code pen example, so you can play with it later. And if you know that the developers following you have no clue how to use position sticky, you can back it up with ARIA. Alors là, um, il y a une table, et c'est de la prévention pour l'avenir. J'ai mis tous les tout l'aria. C'est pas une bonne idée de faire ça, mais si tu sais que les personnes qui vont te suivre savent pas qu'est-ce qu'ils font, tu peux faire euh, penser d'avance et le réparer avant qu'ils le cassent. OK. Accessibility is user experience. Just do it right the first time and you're good. Security. Who's using your site? It's not just you. It can be seriously secure um, features that you need to include. So security features, HTTPS, links with the double slash. So if you're on HTTP, you'll have HTTP. If you're on FTP, you'll have FTP. If you're on HTTPS, it will stay HTTPS. Um, validate client side and server side. Authenticate. Um, you know, understand the same origin uh, policy and cores. Ooh, and check all of the um, all of the data that your users send in because that is where most insecure things happen. And your third party scripts. If you're downloading something from NPM, check it. Do you know who created it? Il y a plein de problèmes. Il y avait des problèmes avec NPM. Il y avait un script qui faisait du Bitcoin mining parce que la personne n'avait plus envie de le faire. Il le donnait à quelqu'un d'autre et l'autre personne n'était pas. There was someone who used Bit, uh, NPM module to do, put Bitcoin in. It was a popular module. Confidentiality or privacy. Third party scripts. Um, don't put Google and Facebook onto your page. I mean, it's, Ads are tracking, Google is tracking, Urchin, you know, ça uh, s'appelle plus Urchin. Web, uh, Google Analytics, ils savent tout. Facebook, you know Facebook is not doing anything good. So um, think about these things. And think about who you might be impacting. If you're just thinking about yourself, you know, you're like, I really don't want to get ads from, okay, let me tell you a story. 
Uh, I signed up for that service where they send you clothes. Uh, Stitch Fix. Alors, ils m'ont envoyé des vêtements. Et ils ont donné, euh, parce que j'étais sur une site, maintenant tout le monde sait que je suis un peu grosse. Alors, j'ai des pubs avec des femmes obèses tout le temps. Alors, Stitch Fix m'a envoyé de l'information à quelqu'un d'autre qui n'était pas exactement correct parce que je ne suis pas mince. Mais. Euh, alors, j'ai ça tout le temps. Alors, ça, ça, ça me gêne parce que ça me dit que je dois perdre beaucoup de poids. Ça, j'appelle les 20 kilos de Trump. Euh, J'étais beaucoup plus mince en 2016. So, in this picture right here, you have an abused woman and you have an abuser. How can an abuser use your site and how can a, an abused woman be abused by your site? Or how can she use it securely and know that he's not going to find out about it? So, your designers should have people in, in their mind when they're designing stuff and have user stories. But as an engineer, you also need to have user stories. So their user stories are who they want to use the products. Your user stories should be about who you enable to, to access the content as well. So it's not the same user stories, because theirs is the people with the money who buy the product. Yours is who can use it safely. Um, and securely. And user experience is super important. J'aimerais bien que vous regardez à son iPad et comme c'est compliqué. You can see the form on his iPad is super complicated. You need to make user experience super understandable because when this happens, you don't want there to be a mistake on that, right? There, User experience, le design, la compréhension de, ton, de tes utilisateurs est super important. Alors, uh, user experience. An interface is like a joke. If you have to explain it, it's not really that funny. Um, so how can your site be exploited is something you need to think about. I want to give you an example of why it's important to have different people on your team. Uh, this, this third row there, this is material icons from Google. Ça, c'est uh, des icons qui ont été créés par Google. Et si tu remarques, il y a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 chaises d'avion. Et deux, deux, deux avions. There is eight airplane seats in different reclining positions. There isn't a single pregnant woman in that framework that they created. There's no baby cart like uh, a tram. Ça, c'était créé par des hommes. Il n'y avait pas de femmes dans l'équipe. Il n'y avait pas de femmes enceintes. Et il n'y a même pas de berceau. La première fois qu'ils ont créé ça. Ils ont créé une app pour la santé. Ils n'ont pas mis de, de trucs pour euh, gérer les règles. They did a health app and they didn't have a calendar for periods. So if you're creating a health app and you're ignoring the fact that 45 percent or so of the population menstruates, um, you're missing out on 40 percent of the population. You're creating something that people don't need to use. Alors, pense toujours, always think about accessibility, performance, internationalization, security, privacy, and user experience. Um, la performance pour les ingénieurs, c'est vite à coder si tu le codes pr correctement la première fois. Si tu fais des conneries, ça prend beaucoup plus de temps de réparer. Alors, fast to code, c'est de, de, de prendre un peu plus de temps pour le faire correctement. Fast to code is to get it right the first time, so you don't have to put the extra time in to correct it. Yes, it might take a, an hour more out of a 40-hour week, but you're saving years of technical debt. So performance, plan ahead of time, always think about it, and ensure that you have diversity and inclusion in your team. Accessibility, plan ahead of time, always think about it, and make sure you have diversity and inclusion in who you're thinking about and on your team. Internationalization, plan ahead of time, always think about it, and make sure that you have different types of people on your team. Security, plan ahead of time, always think about it, 
and make sure that you have different people with different concerns on your team. Confidentiality, always think about it. Um, think ahead of time and make sure that you have different people with different issues around security on your team, on, um, around privacy on your team. And user experience. Good design is usable and intuitive. Always think about it and make sure that you have good, um, that you think about diversity and inclusion because those last three icons would have been put in there the first time if Google had actually thought about and had different people on their team. So in English, there's an expression, you can have your cake and eat it too. You can have good user experience and you can have good developer experience as long as you just keep these things in mind. So hire a front-end engineer to develop your stack because if you don't, you'll have a, de debt, a tech debt that's going to cost way more to pull out than it was to put in. So the whole point of this talk was understand your tools, your languages, and the functionalities that you're adding or that you might add to your code. Always think about the six principles that I've been talking about when it comes to user experience while you're programming. In other words, engineer. Take the time necessary to do things correctly because that's fast to code. Refactoring code is not fast. Control your tools, don't let them control you. Don't be content with just preparing this, your, your code for yourself. You are not your only target audience. And oh my god, that's done. And I forgot to introduce myself again, so I'm Estelle. I organize Perf Matters. I write some books. You can follow me at Estelle VW. Um, you can read outdated blog posts at Standardista. Um, uh, and I also uh, work for De Mozilla Developer Network uh, as a contractor, writing about performance, accessibility, and CSS. Thank you, Stella. On va prendre une question avant de conclure cet événement. Est-ce qu'il y a une question? Vous avez tout compris, j'ai plus, plus rien à ajouter. You understood everything, I don't need to, you, you're good? Okay. Wow, that was a good talk then. Donc on va, on va vérifier que Wizan sont de l'autre côté et ensuite on vous invite à tous venir de l'autre côté pour la conclusion. Peut-être une question là Translation, we're going over to the other side afterwards for the conclusion. Uh, uh, thank you for the talk uh, and doing it in English. It was accessible and it was some sort of a point of the talk too. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you.